So about a month or two ago, I actually went ahead and I made an auto calculating spreadsheet for you guys. So you could keep track of your orders on Facebook Marketplace for drop shipping a little bit easier, keep track of your data so you could grow your business and keep, you know, and stay organized, right? Although I, it occurred to me looking back because somebody asked me about it. So I look back like to kind of refresh through it. And it occurred to me that this kind of spreadsheet is outdated a little bit. So I wanted to go ahead and make a completely new spreadsheet, a completely new video for you guys, not just on Facebook Marketplace and like update it for all the outdated stuff, but also for Mercari, for Poshmark and Amazon as well. So this spreadsheet will handle all of those marketplaces for you. It auto calculates, um, you know, and like I said, I've not much changes in this video, although I did add those marketplaces to the spreadsheet. Although there are some different nuances that will keep, you know, help you keep track of your, your inventory, help you keep track of your sales and your customers and all that good stuff and your tracking numbers a little bit easier so that you can scale your business and, you know, make more money, right? So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you appreciate any of the value in it, just give it a thumbs up. I genuinely appreciate it, but let's hop into the computer and I'll show you how to, you know, how to operate the spreadsheet and I'll show you where you can go ahead and grab it. So about a month, maybe a month and a half ago, maybe even longer, honestly, I created a drop shipping sh uh, spreadsheet template for you guys. And it was basically, you know, my process, how I input orders, how I kept track of everything in my drop shipping business, mainly for Facebook Marketplace, because that's what I was doing at the time, right? And I wanted to update it because while that one that I put out still helps, there are some missing things in there that will help you a little bit more. Plus this one that I'm, I'm going to uh, give you here is, you know, practically set up to auto calculate. We'll also show you how to deal with Poshmark Mercari as well as Amazon. And there's just different nuances that I kind of want to touch on here. So this is the updated one. This will help you a lot more. There's some different things in this one that are not in the last one, but obviously I will update this so you can get this template if you don't already have it at the end of the video, okay? So here's the basics, right? Like this is what the spreadsheet template looks like. And as we add orders in, they'll start auto calculating down here. They'll tell me what I've earned overall, right? In this column, they'll tell me what I spent to obviously get that, right? They'll tell me what my profit per item is, what my margin percentage on that is. Like for the example right here, like I earned 77 0.5% because you just moved the decimal point over to uh, over two spots, right? So I made 77.5% on this item right here. And it will also slowly add them all and auto calculate so that at the end of the month, I usually keep track of this monthly and I make a new spreadsheet every month. Although you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I recommend uh, keeping it track, uh, keeping track of it monthly, but you again, you again don't have to do that, okay? And that way you'll know exactly what your profit, you know, is every single month, exactly what you spend, exactly what you've earned, exactly what your average margin is, so that you can make incremental improvements, incremental adjustments, and improve your business, okay? So, for example, these are fake orders in here for all of these. We're gonna go through Poshmark, Mercari, Amazon, and the different nuances of each and how I keep track. But basically. At the beginning of the day, today it is 721, right? So if I were, if I woke up to a couple orders here, or maybe I just got an order on Facebook Marketplace, and you'll see down here I have four tabs, right? So we have Facebook Marketplace open, uh, Poshmark, a tab, Tosh, uh, I can't talk today, a tab for Poshmark, wow, a tab for Mercari, and a tab for Amazon, okay? And if you don't plan on selling on any of these, you don't have to either ever go in there and input anything, or you can simply just delete that tab altogether, okay? So today, if I got an order, right, what I usually do in the morning is I'll come in and I'll be like, okay, 72121 is exactly what date it is, and I'll just start processing a bunch of these down here because I know I'll get multiple, don't know what I just did there, did not mean to do that. But I know I'll get multiple orders daily, so I usually just start out with like 10 to 20 because that's roughly about what I expect to get on an average day, right? So I'll start inputting those and then I'll just start fulfilling orders. And what I always do here is I'll go like FBM and then I'll put the name of the person in here. Now you don't need FBM here because obviously it's in the FBM spreadsheet. It's just kind of like a habit that I have. Same thing with Amazon. I'll put the Amazon marketplace in, even though, you know, obviously we're in the Amazon tab. So if you want to not do that, then that's perfectly fine. Again, I do the same thing with Mercari. I do the same thing with Poshmark. It's just a habit, but you don't need to there, right? So let's just assume you're not going to do that. And we'll say like you get an order from like, I don't know, like Yo Rome <laughs> Yoel Romero, who's a UFC fighter, uh, random. So you get an order from Yoel Romero. It's for this same three-pack mop handle. So you're going to put the, the title in here, the marketplace, and the name, or just simply the orderer's name here. I don't personally ever keep track of the uh, order ID on Facebook um, because 
I simply go back through my Facebook orders, or you can even do it on, you know, uh, what's it called? You can even do it on Z drop as well. If you want to look through your orders there, it's very easy to find it, especially if you have the name of the item and the actual person's name, it's usually pretty easy to just do a search and find with like control F on Facebook marketplace through your orders. So I don't really ever do that. You can though, if you want to do that, then just add a, a column here, just go insert column and it should, you can just like put a column in here for like, you know, Facebook marketplace order number, right? But I don't ever do that. So you don't, you don't really need that in my opinion. Okay. Now tracking, I always leave blank until I get the information that this is tracked, right? So for example, I'll come through and let's say that I source this specifically from Amazon. Well, then I'll put Amazon in there. If I source this specifically from Walmart, I'll put Walmart in there. If I source this from Target, I'll put Target in there, Chewy in there, you know, whatever it is, eBay, it doesn't matter. Whatever your supplier is, this is where you want to keep track of who your supplier is and then what you actually got paid on the order, right? Not the, uh, you know, not, not the revenue, but your take home profit on the order. So you want, you can look at that in a number of different ways. It will tell you in the email sometimes. You can also go, go into edit and look at your estimated payment. There's a number of ways to do it, right? But just find out what your, your margin is there. Let's say hypothetically it was like 43, 65, super random, right? And then that's what you that's what you start with right here, right? So then you want to go ahead and go through the ordering process. I mean, you're not sure what the ordering process is. You simply want to go ahead and copy the shipping address and the buyer's information Go to your supplier, order that item, and send it to that, that buyer and that shipping address, right? This is common sense, but if you don't understand how to do that, drop a comment down below. Let me know, and if I see enough people that need to know how to process orders, I thought that was kind of like a basic thing, so I haven't made that video yet, but it seems like it's a growing issue that some people would like me to make a video on, so if that's you, then drop a comment down below. Let me know, and if several people have that issue, I will go ahead and I will make an, a video showing how to actually order and go through the ordering process, right? So let's say you're gonna order it to Yo Romero and their address, and then you finally get your shipping order or your supplier order ID, right? So we're just gonna copy this for the sake of saving your time. You would paste the order ID into this column right here and write what you spent in this column right here. So for example, maybe this was like, I don't know, like 3320, right? Bam. And then to get this to start auto calculating, usually it does. You just want to simply put in, it usually will start auto calculating. Um, but you know, because I just kind of deleted a few things and, and mixed and matched, it doesn't have like the parameter set. If it's not working, then all you simply want to do is go to this profit column, click equals, click on this one do a minus sign and then click on this one, right? And then hit enter. Because all you really wanna know is you wanna know what this minus this equals, right? And as you start doing that a couple times, it will start picking up the trajectory of it and then a few orders in, it will just start auto-calculating everything, okay? These down here, you never have to touch. They will auto-calculate as you move down the spreadsheet. For the margin, if you wanna start this auto-calculating, if it's not working, you just click equals, you take the profit right here, click that column once, and then you click divided by the spend column. Okay, and then enter, and now you can see that you have a 31% margin on this item. You made $10.45 if everything goes to plan, okay? Now, I keep this open. Let's just say that, like, hypothetically, you're going down the orders, and you start having orders. You start processing orders, right? And then you get notified that, like, one of your orders shipped, right? So then you want to come back. You want to input the tracking number into your shipped item. You find who that person is, where the order is in your spreadsheet. You put the tracking information in there. You put the tracking information in Facebook Marketplace, and you and you ship your order, right? And then what I like to do is I'll highlight this, this row right here. I'll come in, and I'll make this a 1. Okay. And that, what that basically does is as you get more and more orders, it's going to keep your spreadsheet really, really easy to keep track of and see what's left in your orders and what is a completed order while keeping, you might, you might think like, okay, well, why wouldn't you delete that? Well, because you want it to auto calculate and keep your, your data in here. And if you ever need to go back and figure out like, okay, Yo Romero is filing a complaint saying their order never came, or there's an issue with a specific order and you have like the tracking number or the order ID number or the buyer's name, right? And this is still in your spreadsheet, you just can't see it. Well, then you can come back in, you can search for Yo Romero and bam, it will pop up with your order and then you can just re-maximize that again and figure out exactly what rent went wrong. You can look at the tracking. Did you use OA Genius? You know, what's the order ID? Who's the supplier? So you can look more into it. And so that's why I like to keep it like that. I'll just change it to one. And this is the static across the board for every supplier. It doesn't matter if it's Facebook Marketplace. It doesn't matter if it's Amazon, Mercari, Poshmark, whatever, okay? So 
that's what I recommend doing it there. And then as you start to build more orders, it'll be very, very easy to keep track of what you still need to process, right? What you still need to input tracking for and what's a completed order, okay? So that's Facebook Marketplace in a nutshell. It's very, very easy. And this Again, the spreadsheet, as you start going through, will auto-calculate and tell you what your, your margins are, your profit is, what your spend is, what you earned, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the next one for Poshmark, and keep in mind with Poshmark, you need to obviously do it one of two ways. I'm not going to go too in-depth with how to actually approach dropshipping on Poshmark because I've done a number of videos uh, on this in the past. Just check the recent videos on the channel. There's about two of them, I think. Um, one deals with like the shipping process and how to actually input tracking doing dropshipping on Poshmark. And the other one is just simply like an overview video. You can go back throughout the past like 20 videos on this channel, find both of those. They're both very, very easy to find and watch them if you want to, okay? So on Poshmark, I don't really ever put the tracking number in because it's kind of like a lazy habit, although you can. But what I do like to put here is after I'm done, I don't really do the dropship arbitrage anymore. What I simply do is I'll I'll do it just like dropshipping, right? So I'll order this to Anna Ferris. If she's the person that ordered, she's an actress, obviously. It, it, this is a fake order again. But I'll order it to Anna Ferris. And then what I'll do is I'll also package up a thank you note with a Poshmark label and ship it to that same buyer and that same address so that once they get the order, that, that I obviously get the order delivered and make the money, but then the Poshmark label still also goes to them as well, right? So I don't ever really put the tracking number in, but you could obviously put the tracking number in here if you wanted to, because again, just like any other order, you're going to get notified with the tracking number. It's probably a safer bet to do that, but again, it's just a habit. I'm kind of lazy. And if I really need to track an order down, I have the supplier, I have the order ID. I can always go back and look into my orders on that supplier and figure out exactly what went wrong. So that's why I don't really input the tracking here because it's not necessary. Um, but you can if you want more data to play with, right? Same thing here, right? You're going to input the date, input the item title, input the marketplace and the buyer name um, or just the buyer name. If you just want to do the buyer name, change this title uh, for this column to just buyer. Obviously, the tracking for the shipment here after the, the shipment has shipped um, and you get the tracking number or just skip this all together. I don't put this in there, but I wanted to touch on it. Um, and I always just put like a reminder here is like I ship this with the Poshmark label and thank you. And then again, same thing, nothing changes the order ID number after you order it, the supplier, what you earned, what you spent, and then it should auto calculate again with your margin and your profit here. And this should, you know, start auto calculating down here. Now, if you need to add more columns, right? Cause like, obviously this is up here so you can see exactly what your overall profit and spend and everything is here. If you need to input more columns, just highlight a column right here. And then on PC, I'm sure it's something very, very similar on Mac. You can Google it. You just want to hold control shift and hold the plus button in. So three buttons, control shift plus, hold them all in once you have a column highlighted like this. And we'll just start inputting, uh, you know, rows right there. And you can just input as many as you want, right? You can really go really, like you can go crazy if you really want to input a bunch and you're getting a bunch of orders and just see how it starts to add a bunch of them in there. And then you go all the way to the top and then look, you just added a bunch of columns. So that's very, very easy to do that way. Okay. Now, same thing with Mercari. Nothing really changes on Mercari. Again, you're just going to put the date, the item title, the marketplace or the buyer. Or again, if you just want to put the buyer name, that's fine here. The tracking number is going to be, you know, blank until you input the tracking. Same thing here with the order. Nothing really changes. This is just the Mercari. And the reason that I break it up this way is so at the end of the month, I can see exactly what I'm, what my profit margin percentage is. Like what, like for example, like 29% here, if that was my margin, well, I know I made pretty much 29% on all of my, my orders on Mercari specifically, right? And I can look back at how much am I making on each platform profit wise, right? How much am I spending, obviously, and what my margin percentage is? So I know that, like, okay, for example, like last month I figured out, like, I was making a shitload of money on Amazon, okay? But my margin wasn't nearly, and don't look at these numbers right here. They're just like fake orders. I just input stuff to kind of show you. So I was making a shitload of money. Like, my total revenue pulled in was a lot, but my margin was a lot lower on Amazon than it was on Facebook Marketplace or on Mercari or Poshmark, for example, right? So while I was making a lot in revenue, my margins and, and my profit was half decent, I had to spend a lot of money to make that margin, whereas I could spend a lot less on Facebook Marketplace and keep my margin a lot higher, right? 
Another example of something that I learned by doing this is that while Poshmark, you can make money on Poshmark and you still do. Like I recommend diversifying the platforms. I recommend selling on Poshmark and Mercari if you do it right. And like I said, watch the videos on this channel about how to do it right. But for example, if you're, you know, um, what's it called? Like if you're, you're doing it on Poshmark specifically, you might realize, and this might, may or may not be the case for your business, but like for example, what I learned last last month in Poshmark, and I also didn't scale it up nearly as much as I tried to scale up Facebook Marketplace, Mercari, or Amazon. So like that's why I'm trying to scale it up a little bit this month and see if like my numbers change. But like I didn't really earn that much on Poshmark. So like I stopped kind of putting my time into it because I wasn't making nearly as much as I was on Facebook Marketplace or on Amazon or even close to Mercari, right? So while I'm scaling it up, it's more of like a testing thing. But at, if I do this for a couple months, I'm going to look back at the data and it's like, if I'm not making nearly enough on Poshmark, I might just not waste my time with it. Okay. So I recommend that you want to break all these up into different categories if possible for each marketplace like I have on this spreadsheet. So you can look back and see exactly what your numbers are and what the data is on each and every marketplace because they're all going to be different. Okay. So same thing, like I said, goes with Mercari. Nothing changes. It auto calculates. If you move over to the, the Amazon one, this is the only one that really has a few differences here. So the first thing you're going to notice is when you get an Amazon order, you're going to get emailed just like you would on Facebook Marketplace. So you want to put the order ID in here. The tracking number is going to be empty um, again until you track it. And then again, once you put the tracking number in, just like any other marketplace, just like any part of the spreadsheet, I recommend once an order is done, turn it to a uh, size one so that you can always go back and search for that data and find it if you need to, if you ever run into an issue with a shipment, right? And if you do run into an issue with a shipment, another thing I like to do, just a little caveat here is I'll change this like a different color just so I know like, okay, this had an issue. And then right here in the tracking, I'll put a little note and be like, okay, like buyer requested refund, they're shipping it back or whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, you can also put like notes over here. If you want to make another column for notes on this order, that also works very, very well. Okay. So let's just undo all that, go back. But so the first thing you're going to input is the order ID number. Okay. Then you're going to input the customer's name. Again, this, the item title, all this stuff is pretty much common sense. The date that the order occurred on, so you can go back and look at it. The marketplace, again, this is Amazon. You don't need this. This is just like a habit that I have. You can delete this column if you want. Um, and then the supplier ID, you know, your supplier, obviously, so you can find them. What you earn, same thing here. The only thing that's different here is you're going to have the order ID for Amazon because this is what you're going to need to go ahead and find. You might not need to have this column if you're just starting, right? Like I didn't have this when I first started and it was a big mistake because like when I first started, I was only getting like five to maybe, maybe like five to 10 orders, uh, you know, a day. And like, once I started to scale, I needed to know all my order IDs because you can no longer go in and just manually find them. It takes too long. So you need to, you need to search for the order ID in your Amazon orders to find the order ID, right? So this is not, you know, a lot of this stuff that I'm talking about isn't going to be as important. Like if you're not scaled, right? But as you scale this information and keeping track of it, like I'm talking about, is going to become vitally more important so that you can stay organized and scale your business, right? And keep track of all your numbers. So this is just going to help you guys. Again, this auto calculates. I will attach a, or I drop a attach. I wish I could attach. That'd be cool. I'll drop a link uh, to this directly. If you guys want to go ahead and download this spreadsheet template, you can set it up for Facebook Marketplace, Poshmark, Mercari, Amazon, any one or all of these, or, you know, just a few of these, whatever you guys are working with. But if you guys do want to see the video on how to actually process an order and, you know, go through the, the drop shipping order process, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any other questions, drop a comment again in the comment section down below. I would love to help you out with it, but I hope this video helped. I know I made this video in the past, but I wanted to do an updated one because there are some different things that, that I do now with the spreadsheets that I didn't used to. And so I wanted to make sure you guys had the most up-to-date spreadsheet possible that could help you. So hope you like it and I'll see you in the next one.